so that way some of the kids or some of the other players that see it, um, kind of what what it means uh, turning the barrel, snapping the barrel, and what that looks like compared to a push and how a lot of times coaches are like, hey, we're gonna, um, you know, just take your hands right to it, take your hands right to it. And these kids are like, okay, I'm doing that. But what you teach, you actually are taking your hands to the ball, but you're creating speed. Okay, doing it. so the barrel turn is basically holding the bat perpendicular to your, your top hand forearm and making its turn perpendicular to this forearm. Here's the forearm, there's the bat. I'm supinating my top hand. I'm turning my thumb from in to out, in to out, okay? And the barrel goes rearward when I do that, as compared to pushing it forward. I don't know if you can hear this on the camera right now, but the whoosh sound that it's I'm it's making when I when you do it. push it forward is right here. And the whoosh sound that I make when I do this is back there. Aaron Judge says, Rich, when I get my barrel up to speed right there, if I'm late, I get a base hit apple. If I'm on time, I go gap to gap. And if I hit the barrel there, I hit it 500 feet, okay? So the quickness of getting the barrel into the zone right there is far quicker than trying to get the barrel into the zone by pushing it forward. Mm -hmm. I only have to go a small distance right here to be in the zone, but if I'm pushing A to B, pushing my barrel A to B, I've got this big distance to go to get there, mm -hmm. and then I have a tendency to leave the zone quickly. But when I get my barrel in the zone right there, it's in the zone this entire distance, mm -hmm. a good long distance. And you're not short two, yeah. long through. And your knob is actually going down to the ball. Yes. You're, actually, you're not what? trying to create a big. No, loop. You're, I, you're creating a. a I'm not a launch angle. Guy. Yeah, I don't yeah. talk about launch angle. Mm -hmm. In fact, we swing down. Mm -hmm. When we're in our stance, the barrel's over our head. When we hit the ball, the ball's there. Somehow that barrel went down, okay? It goes down by turning it down. It doesn't go down by pushing it down, mm -hmm. okay? When you make this arc, the barrel started there and it ends up right there. It actually goes up through the ball a little bit naturally, but you're actually swinging it down. You're trying to get to here as quick as you can, but when you get there as quick as you can, the barrel whips right there and then hits line drives. Yeah. So what, you shouldn't be hitting pop-ups. What about on the high, on the high pitch? High pitch, okay. Here. So go back to this relationship with the forearm to the barrel, 90 degrees, might be 80, 85, might be 95. But on a high pitch, it comes out like this, still perpendicular to my forearm. On a pitch down the middle, it comes out like this, still perpendicular to my forearm. On a low pitch, comes out like that, perpendicular to my forearm. So the adjustment is made by the angle of this forearm. There's the high pitch, there's the middle pitch, there's the low pitch. The arm itself may move a little bit, the body's gonna tilt a little bit also, and that's how you adjust up and down. It feels like you're doing the same thing every time you swing the bat. You're supinating this top hand around this forearm, and it, sometimes you do it at a high, high level, Sometimes you do it at a medium level, sometimes you do it at a low level, but this move here is the same at whatever level you do it at. Now what about the weight? You talk about the weight shift. About the weight the shift? about being one-legged. Here's what most people do. They shift, put their foot down, and then push the bat. That's what a lot of big leaguers do. They're athletic enough to be big leaguers. Their technique is not high level, okay? So what we need to do, we need to go forward, but we've got to stay back. How do you do that? This is forward and forward. This is forward and back. The whole time I'm going forward, when I'm doing it right, I'm coiling and I'm staying on my back leg even though I'm going forward. As compared to this, where I went forward and I just fall or collapse or crash to my front leg. The importance of keeping this foot off the ground as you go forward, that's how you stay back. If you keep your foot off the ground, you're gonna stretch your back and you're gonna stay back and then at launch, everything goes into the ball, okay? It might take you a while, but if you start looking at big leaguers, you're gonna see all of the, all the greats move forward in some fashion like this, where they're coiling as they go forward, their butt is going around to the pitcher. No, nope, you can't tell, but my shoulder isn't going with my butt. My butt is going 
but my shoulder's not. If I get my shoulder with me, I can't see the ball. And I get a long loopy swing when I do that. So don't confuse the coil. The coil doesn't bring the shoulder, the coil brings the butt around. And the coil and a little bit of sit is how I stay on my back leg as I go forward. Okay? And that snap of the hands, it's, it's at the same time as the... Okay? As and then when you go to swing, we want this move of the torso, this tilt move, as compared to rotation, we want to tilt, and this is what they make fun of me the most on the internet, because I'll admit, it looks weird when I demonstrate it by itself. But this move right here is the boxer's uppercut move, which is the most explosive thing your body can do. You get tremendous quickness and power out of this move. When I do it with a bat, that looks like I might hit a pop-up, but that has nothing to do with where the barrel goes. The barrel's gonna go where I showed you. So I'm gonna tilt extreme and hit a high pitch. Okay, I did this, but I snapped the barrel at a high pitch. Now I'm gonna tilt extreme and I'm gonna hit a medium pitch. Okay, I did this, but I hit the ball right there. Now I'm gonna tilt extreme and hit a low pitch. I'm gonna do this and that. The tilt, which unleashes the body, it unloads the body, unloads the leg, has nothing to do with where the barrel goes. So anybody who sees this and thinks you're gonna hit pop-ups do not understand. Mm -hmm. They don't understand what's going on. For sure. Okay? Um, yeah, no, I appreciate you demonstrating that. Um, I think that's important for people to see because like you said it, it sometimes gets confusing, but, or at least if you're not here doing it, mm -hmm. you're trying to do it on your own, you see the drills and then you have some other outside or your coach going, I don't do that. It's just, you're going to pop stuff up. And in reality, you're actually creating the pattern to right. be able to get to every single level of pitching. Yeah. Um, man, Rich, I appreciate it yeah. um, very much. I appreciate our time hitting together too. I'm excited about this season. Um, where uh, where can people f uh, find you on Instagram, Twitter? What's your teacher man? Nineteen eighty six on Twitter and Instagram. Um, yeah, that's where you find me the most. Direct message me if you want. I'll give you my uh, phone number if you want to talk about coming to visit me. And we can talk. As far as uh, when people come, when people come to uh, when they start messaging you, what's what's one thing that they need to be prepared? To, to, to realize and be able to be prepared to when they do message you, whether it's, hey, Rich, can you take a look at my swing? Or, hey, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what's okay. this stuff? Um, I get a lot of videos sent to me. I get a whole lot of requests. Will you look at my swing and give me some advice? And I get to most of them. I always get to someone who's already been to me and worked with me. Uh, I get to a lot of others. I'll tell you who's last on the list. The people who are last on the list are the ones where I have to go to Google and download your swing. I can't just click on it and see it. Uh, people who send me slow motion video are last on my list. Slow motion video is the cause of most analysis mistakes. You have to be able to figure out where the barrel was launched in order to properly analyze a swing. You can't see that in slow motion video. In 30 frame per second video, you can come within a reasonable certainty of exactly when the hitter launched the bat. That means you, you now know when the launch was, that means everything before that was loading, and everything after that is swing. And if you play it slow motion, you don't know where that dividing line is, mm -hmm. and you can make any slow swing look like it was good, oh, yeah. Yeah. when in fact it's long and slow. For sure. So send me full speed video. I can always play it frame by frame to slow it down. But I try to get to everybody. I can't get to everybody. If you send me one swing at one pitch instead of a whole at bat, I don't want to watch you take five, six pitches and then get the swing at the end. I, I got, I, I've only got so much time, and I want to get to as many people as I can. So the quicker you can make it for me, the more likely I want to get back to you. Sure. What's uh the teacher man in 1986? Uh, what's your plans for the summer? Um, I'll probably travel a lot. I'm with Aaron every couple of weeks. Um, people come to me. I just doesn't it really doesn't matter summer or winter with me. Uh, I stay busy during the baseball season. I travel a little bit more because I'm traveling to my pro players. But uh, seems like it's same year round for me. For sure, you doing any clinics in the off season or um, anything like that? Anything lined up? I've slowed down on the clinics. 
because I don't get enough one-on-one -on -one time with everybody who comes to the clinic. Mm -hmm. And when they go home and they have a little struggle, there's nobody there to help them. So I don't think I've really, the clinic was helpful. Um, I now prefer people to come to me and spend a couple of days with me, get three or four lessons in with me at one time. Uh, say one lesson today, two lessons tomorrow and fly home or two and two and fly home. You're gonna get a good understanding of what I teach. And from that point, we can communicate with video and we can we know what each other's saying. But in a clinic, when I've got 12 people here and I don't get any real one-on-one -on -one time with any of them, when they leave, we still can't communicate real well. We, ha we haven't had enough time with you individually yeah. uh, to make it effective. Yeah, so I, did I may do some clinics. I, don't, I like doing coaches clinics mm -hmm. uh, where I can work with coaches and help them learn so they can teach their players. Mm -hmm. And a coaches clinic works best when a coach brings a player. Mm -hmm. And now I'm coaching both of them. And now when the player goes home, he has what he remembers, but he also has his coach to help him uh, improve.